Okay, so now we've just looked at what happens with martensite and how ma why martensite forms. Remember, martensite is only in steels where the atoms cannot move quickly and easily on um, transformation. Martensite is incredibly hard. Martensite is incredibly brittle. Hard is good if you're looking for wear resistance or holding an edge like a knife or a sword. Brittle, however, is not good if you're looking at a kitchen knife. You've probably heard the phrase, temper your behaviour, which means just step it back a little bit. Don't make big changes, just step it back. Tempering is actually a blacksmithing term from way back when, Middle English. It's at least a thousand years old. What it means is, slightly change the martin site. So we've got that body-centred tetragonal. If I put heat into that, just a little bit, like 200 degrees, if I put 200 degrees of heat into that, just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of heat, that body-centred track, the body-centred tetragonal martin side, now has got enough heat energy to transform in a ferrite. So it makes, I'll just draw it in as a cube. Now the carbon's got to go somewhere. The carbon just makes tiny little pockets. Let's look at atomic scale. The carbon just makes tiny little pockets in there where that might be an iron carbide, tiny little molecule and then that sort of stretches it out a bit. Because that stretched it out a bit, those atoms now get pushed out to here, they get pushed out to there. And if I'm trying to move those along, all of a sudden it hits a little blob of ceramic inside the structure. Yeah? So it makes it tough. Tough means resistance to impact, resistance to fracture, or technically energy absorbed in fracture is the technical definition of toughness. It's really hard to move that still so it retains its hardness because all the atoms are still locked in position. But then if you try and rip it in half, you're ripping apart ferrite. So it's strong. Make sense? That is tempering. That's what tempering does. In the textbook, you'll see temper colours, where you wave a flame over the surface of the metal and it changes, the iron changes colour. Starts out being yellow, then brown, then blue, then dark blue. That's indicating how thick the oxide layer is. The hotter the temperature, the higher it gets. But this chemical reaction, every chemical reaction, which is what this is, forming a ceramic out of a solution, needs time and temperature. So you can go 200 degrees times one hour. You can go 300 degrees times 20 minutes. You might go 150 degrees times three hours and you all get the same response, same result. So time and temperature is what you need to make that happen. So I didn't mention in the video, but I'll just mention it really quickly now as an afterthought and add it in. When you're tempering, there's two key points. About 200 to 300 degrees, let's call it 250 for one of a temperature. If you're below 250 degrees, you get fine carbides all through your tempered martin site. And you just end up with basically, if you look at it under a microscope, looks like that. Too difficult to see. Above 250, you get a coarse carbide. This is actually cementite. It's a uh, cementite structure. Below it, 250, you actually make another form of carbide, but that's a technical distinction. So below 250, Fine carbides everywhere through the structure. Above it, a bit more temperature it goes, but it's still too hard to see. So our teachers will be saying when you're asked to draw a microstructure of tempered steel, it's just basically one grey blob that you cannot see detail in under an optical microscope.